To complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. The National Wages and Productivity Commission is expected to finalize by the third week of October the amount of wage increase that workers in Metro Manila will get. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III says the wage hike for minimum wage earners in the National Capital Region will not be lower than 20 pesos. But the Associated Labor Unions Trade Union Congress of the Philippines hits the plan saying that the amount is not enough. The group has been calling for a 320 peso increase in minimum wage. In response, Dole says they need to consider all aspects that could impact other sectors of the government before they implement a wage increase. You have to balance the interests of management and also especially labor. Eh, hindi ka lang pwede magbigay ng ganyang kalaki na maaaring makakabuti sa manggagawa for a while. Kasi okay, tata sila, pero eh, kung mag-close yung business, di mawawalan din ang trabaho. Meanwhile, members of the Philippine Amalgamated Supermarkets Association are lamenting the tedious and strict process of securing permits to sell the subsidized rice from the National Food Authority or NFA. According to Stephen Kua, a supermarket owner and president of the association, they are willing to participate in the government's initiative to provide the public more access to affordable rice. However, they are having second thoughts in selling the subsidized staple because the NFA is requiring them to pay for permit and undergo tight inspections in order to become an authorized NFA rice dealer. Eh, siyempre, gagastos pa kami para lang tumulong. Kami pang, kami pang will be left holding an empty bag, di ba? <clears throat> For now, only two supermarkets are authorized to sell NFA rice. The Daily Supermarket in Cubao and the San Roque Supermarket in Novaliches. The Department of Trade and Industry has assured the group to reach out to the NFA to address the said matter. In other news, Malacanang assures that the Duterte administration is addressing inflation and other pressing matters being faced by the country. This is following allegations that the government is only focusing on silencing its critics and the release of a Pulse Asia survey showing inflation as the most urgent concern among Filipinos. The latest survey says 63% have said that the Duterte administration should address rising consumer prices, followed by improving workers' salary and reducing poverty. Right now, the, pri the, the foremost priority of the administration is fighting inflation. So everything is sidelined now. Dahil hindi naman natin inaasahan talaga yung pagtaas bigla ng presyo ng uh, crudo at ng petrolyo. No? So I would say that um, even the administration acknowledges na mas importanteng harapin yung problema na malapit sa sitmura ng taong bayan. And the entire city of Naga in Cebu has been placed under state of calamity as a death toll in a landslide that struck a sitio in Tinaan village climbs to 64. 28 others remain missing based on the update from disaster officials involved in the ongoing search and retrieval operations. Mayor Christine Chong says the declaration will help speed up the release of cash assistance for over 7,000 individuals who were told to leave their homes after the incident. Mayor Chong also says that aside from the government assistance, they will also distribute cash donations for affected families and maintenance of evacuation centers. If and when, no, dugay pa ma construct a relocate, relocation sites sa angay nga irelocate, kinahanglan jud ta og sustenance para sa evacuation centers, their daily needs. While we are so grateful for the support from all over coming in. Meanwhile, soldiers and policemen who are involved in the search and retrieval operations in the landslide hit Itogon Benguet have been ordered to return to their mother units by next week. This after authorities decided to terminate the operations by Thursday, October 4. Office of the Civil Defense Regional Director Ruben Carandang says it has been days since the retrieval team has recovered a single body of the missing victims in any of the landslide areas. 
Authorities still have high hopes that they will be able to find the missing individuals at the main landslide site in Barangay Uca before they officially terminate the operations. I am looking forward also that with that remaining 30 to 40 meters distance to the gate of the portal with about 10 meters thick of soil and rocks, we will find uh, those uh, 40 missing. In other news, the Department of Health or DOH reports that 19 out of 154 children who died after receiving a dose of Dengvaxia were infected with dengue despite the vaccination. But Health Undersecretary Eric Domingo clarifies this report still needs further studies to establish whether or not the vaccine itself caused the deaths of 19 children. Of the 900,000 patients have been vaccinated, 154 of them are ano, no, confirmed to have died from one reason or another, one illness or another. They were vaccinated with Dengvaxia and somehow the vaccine either failed or yung nga sinasabi na it might have caused more severe illness, di ba? And caused death. Pero 19 yun. Domingo also says that the remaining 135 deaths were from non-dengue cases. This means that they died after suffering illnesses such as heart disease, pneumonia, leukemia, asthma, and central nervous system infection. Non-dengue cases are actually more. Sa buong Pilipinas kasi hindi naman top 10 ng dengue sa morbidity and mortality. So kami magkakasakit ng mga bata, i-assure yeah, naman natin syempre magkakasakit din sila doon sa top 10 na yon. Hindi naman porke na bakunahan sila ng dengue wala na silang, hindi na silang magkaka-UTI, hindi na silang magkaka-diarrhea, di ba? The DOH, meanwhile, is looking to file a case against French pharmaceutical giant Sanofi Pasteur relating to the Dengvaxia controversy before the year ends. Rains will continue in parts of Mindanao. Leslie Longboen is at the UNTV Weather Center to tell us why. Leslie, good evening. Yes, good evening. Typhoon Paeng maintained its strength while almost stationary over the Philippine Sea. At 3 p.m. today, Paeng was spotted at 735 kilometers east-northeast of Basco, Batanes, with maximum sustained winds of 160 kilometers per hour and gustiness of up to 195 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, southwest monsoon enhanced by Paeng will bring rains over Palawan, Mindoro, Zamboanga Peninsula, Northern Mindanao, and the provinces of Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. In Metro Manila and the rest of the country, fair weather is expected. Pag-as advised seafarers of risky travel over the northern and eastern seaboards of Luzon and the eastern seaboard of Visayas. Forecast shows temperature in Metro Manila tomorrow will range from 25 to 33 degrees Celsius, 16 to 24 degrees Celsius in Baguio City, 25 to 32 degrees Celsius in Metro Cebu, and 25 to 33 degrees Celsius in Metro Davao. Tomorrow, the sun is expected to rise at 5.45 in the morning. That's weather forecast. Back to the studio. Thank you very much, Leslie Longboen from the UNTV Weather Center. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos live from Bangkok, Thailand. Kath, good evening. Good evening, William. Authorities in Bangkok, Thailand are ramping up its campaign against feeding pigeons in public areas. This report explains why. The Thai capital is considering jailing people who feed pigeons in public to try to eliminate the risk of bird flu and other diseases, officials say. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration is spearheading a campaign to catch pigeons and has vowed to impose a ban on feeding them. Violators could be jailed for up to three months, face a 25,000 baht fine, or both. There is a risk of disease to humans in places where there are high concentration of pigeons. Other cities around the world have imposed similar bans, including Italian tourist favorite Venice, where feeding pigeons is illegal, but there is no threat of serving time. In Bangkok, pigeons, often dubbed rats with wings, are often found in crowded areas, including temples, markets, and public parks. Tawisak says health risks from pigeons include respiratory diseases, meningitis, and bird flu. 
In Thailand, there are high concentrations of pigeons in public places like Buddhist temples, markets, and community parks where many Thais and tourists continue to give food to the birds. We have to ask for cooperation from the public to not feed the birds, as your generosity is creating a burden for the neighbors. Prime Minister Prayut chan -cha this month ordered a nationwide campaign to reduce the number of pigeons in populated areas. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue, Bangkok, Thailand. U.S. President Donald Trump turns down a meeting with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, putting a damper on high hopes for trade renegotiations. Trump's comments were made as NAFTA talks continues to drag on. He took aim at the country's dairy tariffs and reiterated his threat to tax Canada's auto industry. The U.S. made a deal with Mexico in August, but stakeholders on both sides of the border have urged for the U.S. to make it a three-way deal and include Canada. Ryanair cancels 190 or about 8% of its 2,400 scheduled flights this Friday. The airline has adjusted its schedule in the face of strike action being taken by unions in Spain, Belgium, Poland, Portugal, Italy and Germany. The Irish airline says this will affect 30,000 passengers who have been notified by text and email. The long-running industrial action by Ryanair staff centers on working conditions. Ryanair says it sincerely regrets these unnecessary customer disruptions, which it blames on agitation from competitor airlines. Hundreds of people were told to leave their homes in Calci and Vicopisano of Italy, while the Pisa airport and schools in the area were shut down. Meanwhile, five tourists from Denmark and Norway were rescued from a mountainous region of northern India. Beverly Saison tells us why. In Italy, hundreds of people were ordered out of their homes and Pisa airport was shut on Tuesday after a huge fire swept wooded hills in Italy's central Tuscany region. Officials believe the blaze, which started late on Monday, was started deliberately on Montessera, which lies between the Tuscan art cities of Pisa and Lucca. Local authorities said some 700 people were told to leave their homes as a precaution in the towns of Calci and Vicopisano, while schools in the area were all shut. There were no immediate reports of injuries or of damage to properties. In India, five tourists from Denmark and Norway were rescued from a mountainous region of India's northern Himachal Pradesh state on Wednesday. They were among the hundreds of people stranded after days of rain and snowfall caught up roads. The tourists were airlifted from the Lahaul Spiti region by the Indian Air Force and brought to the town of Kalu for medical treatment. Local media reports around 500 people, including tourists, were trapped in the region. Eight people have died in Himachal Pradesh due to the weather. And still in India. At least five people died after a three-story building collapsed in the Indian capital of New Delhi on Wednesday morning. India's National Disaster Response Force says they extricated 12 persons from the site, five of whom had died. Local media says one woman and four children died in the incident and cited police as saying several people were believed to be trapped under the debris. Beverly Saison, UNTV News & Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Kath Dumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. A kayaker got more than what he bargained for on a trip in New Zealand's Kaikoura Island when a seal slapped him in the face with an octopus. The video shows the seal coming out of the water, octopus in mouth, swinging the mollusk towards the unsuspecting kayaker. The seal then disappears back into the water before going on to dive in between other kayakers. 23-year-old Tayu Masuda caught the seal on video and says the group did not realize at first what the seals were doing. Meanwhile, an Egyptian man who helps in rescuing migrants making the perilous journey across the sea to Europe is calling on the international community to do more to combat migration crisis. Let's find out why from Leslie Longboe. 
When Egyptian Hassan Ali was 13 years old, his boat carrying hundreds of migrants capsized in the Mediterranean Sea. Ali was saved by an unknown man who was also on the boat. The man grabbed the young Egyptian boy and put him on his shoulders, allowing rescuers to pull Ali to safety. At the certain point, I was already safe, and he drowned in front of my eyes. About 100 people drowned that day, and Ali swore to himself that one day he would return in order to rescue people from a similar fate. Now, Ali is 33 years old and works on the rescue ship Aquarius run by Franco-German charity Sauce Mediterranean and Doctors Without Borders, pulling migrants to safety from rickety boats. He has been working to help migrants since 2007. After his rescue on December 24, 2001, Ali was eventually set to a refugee camp in Camarata, Sicily. He was schooled and learned fluent Italian. Since 2007, he has been working to help migrants in reception centers, at landing points, and now on board rescue ships. Today, Ali puts his skills of speaking Arabic to good use in order to help Aquarius locate migrant ships in distress. Ali believes the international community should be doing more to combat problems of the migrants in their home countries so they no longer need to make the perilous journey across the sea to Europe. Aid, he says, should not just be handing out food and clothing. We should be saying, I am sorry for what is happening in your country. And I hope one day you will be back in your country because I know you do not like being here. Currently, Aquarius is the only rescue ship operating in the Mediterranean. No other ship has been present in the area since late August since Italy has been refusing them the right to dock. Leslie Lumboan, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news September 27, 2018. On behalf of Rina Villamor Camara and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening.